Here in the studio, it's Stacy uh, Wilkes, uh, Representative Stacy Wilkes from uh, Pearl River County, District mm-hmm. 108. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Good morning. Good. How are you? It's good to see you, and uh, good to be I, here. you've got a House Bill, what is it, uh, 375. 375. Let's talk about that first of all, first up. Yeah. But uh, what, is, what is 375? 375 is the um, free speech bill on college campuses, and um, I've championed that since I've um, been in the legislature. And mm-hmm. we've seen some great changes, actually, on college campuses because of this bill. Um, that is hasn't passed in the um, past, but the colleges are making grounds um, because of the attention and things from this bill. So, um, but it's still just regulatory that can be changed at any time. So we need it in statute to protect um, conservatives because they don't necessarily get the same rights as um, as the liberals on the other side. We we've seen that at, at uh, numerous colleges across over the country. Over and, and over. And, and, it, and, and it's happened here in the state well. of Mississippi too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, from not only not only the student body but also the staff. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. They're indoctrinating our kids with our own tax dollars, and um, the conservative students don't get to have the same speakers on you know campus yeah. or have the same groups and things like that. So, while I think it's wonderful that the colleges are moving in the right direction, um, without it being statutory, there's nothing to to keep that there. They can change it at any time. Stacy, does this include the K through 12 as well, or is this, this just is colleges? Just colleges. We're actually, I think there is actually a bill out there that is addressing some issues for K through 12 as well. Couldn't you do that through the amendment process? Just wrap it up in this bill, or do you um, think it's best be left alone? I think that's going to be. There's going to be a separate bill for that. Now, tell me exactly what the bill does. What are the consequences should they do this? Um, well, what this bill does is just says that you know. Um, you can't limit, you know, free speech. Like Ole Miss had, um, the, I think, only three corners where they could speak. And so they remove those and, and things like that. But what this help this does is it speeds up the process because without this bill, it goes to um, the federal courts. So by the time a student challenges it and it gets to court, that student is graduated and gone. Yeah. So it speeds up the process by going to the state court. And also it's a lot less expensive. So it saves the school money and the students money if it does have to go to court. So and if the colleges and universities, are, if they're following um, free speech, the First Amendment, right? I mean, they, and they're doing that. This shouldn't be a problem. Do you have some examples? And I know you're working on some examples, but are there a couple of examples that you could share with us? Well, we had the um, student in, um, I think it was uh, Delta State. Was that like a year or two ago? Um, mm-hmm. And um, basically, they had a student um that um, hurt someone's feelings and was expelled or something over hurting feelings. And <laughs> I, I remember reading that you story. Remember that? I thought, yeah. this is crazy. It this is, is crazy. absolutely there's, ridiculous. There's all kinds of crazy things. And then there's, you know, um, some colleges where they wouldn't allow um, conservative groups to be on campus and things mm-hmm. like that. So this just protects everyone's First Amendment. And um, everyone has the same rights, regardless of what um, party that you, um, you're affiliated with. And this just holds them accountable. And it makes it easier to challenge it um, if it does go to court, where it doesn't take we, so long and doesn't cost yeah. as much. We, we've seen some we've seen some incredible things from professors who have tenure, but the mm-hmm. people who pay their salaries, the parents and uh, of and the students themselves who pay the professors, they don't have tenure in this, and it's it, just crazy. It is crazy, and it's um, tenure is a real um, a real problem. I mean, I just it's a real problem when we're allowing them to indoctrinate our kids with our own money. So it's, it's it's a real problem. Um, where is the bill now? Is it, it hasn't? Is it uh, what what committee is it in? It went to Constitution. It's in Constitution, mm-hmm. and uh, it's the status of that. It hasn't come up for a debate yet, or a floor vote yet. No, we haven't had a committee or a meeting vote yet, yet. I should say. Mm-hmm. It was a so, busy day yesterday, wasn't it? It was a busy day. It was a good day yesterday. I mean, it was it, it was crazy the things going on yesterday. The yeah. Uh, first of all, let's take your thoughts on, on what happened as far as the personal income tax. We'll talk a little bit later to Trey Lamar, but your thoughts on that. I think it's great. Anytime that um, people have a, a decision on how to spend their dollars instead of mm-hmm. the government, I think that's great. Do I think it's a perfect bill? No, but I think it's a very big step in the right direction. Um, it also, we gave, I think it was a, what is it, a 30 or 35 percent reduction on car tags, which I know that's a huge um a huge issue in my district, and so that's a, a big win. And um, we did go up, I think, a, um, 
percent and a half on sales tax, but we did cut the grocery tax, which is where most people's big expenses are and our retirees, mm-hmm. so they won't be hurt. So I do wish we could have done it without any um, uh, tax and sales tax increase, and maybe that day will come where we can do that. But it, this is a huge step in the right direction. Well, I mean, I know the, the Senate wants to do this, and I, I think uh, Governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor Hosman talked about this, but how do you do that? I mean, in, in the real world, when you're putting this together and, and trying to find an option, uh, and you have to have those fire trucks, you have to have that pavement done, the infrastructure, you have to have services that are provided by the city, whether it's police department, whether it's fire, and all of those different things, the services from every one of our state agencies, no matter what it is, you have to have that incoming taxes. So it has to be supplanted. Oh, then absolutely, you find a way, and that can be a disaster if it's not yes. done right. Um, but we have to have growth. Um, And hopefully this will bring in um, more industries and provide more, you know, um, more money in our economy and things like that. And we still have a lot of, you know, there's always waste in government that we can look at. But um, but, yes, this has to be done right or or it will be disastrous for our state. Would you say because we're talking about did they mention this yesterday, the the amount of money that would be that would be refunded back to the people if if we get sales tax at what is it 1.2 1.4 I'm, I'm not sure what the figure is i think how the, much money i need the first forty thousand of income is um is waived and i don't have mm-hmm. all the numbers in front of me um trey can get that to you when he comes in but i know the first forty thousand um for an individual is waived it's right is off that the what's in this bill that we're we're dealing with now yes yes so it's not a complete, it's a phase-in in the phase first 40. In. It's a phase-in, but the first 40 is gone immediately. The um, tax, um, the ta- tag credit is immediate. Mm-hmm. I think the grocery tax is immediate as well. Now, the grocery tax, of course, is 7%. It would be cut to what, 45 or 35 What? what I think is, it was 35 but I'm not, three and a half I'm not percent. positive on that. That would be a tremendous savings. Oh, but absolutely. all of that money that, we, that you're not having taken out of your check, that the state takes out because you're working and they're taxing your labor, that's going to go back into the marketplace. Exactly. And exactly. that's going to generate taxes. Exactly. And also, so, you know, we've had a big surplus, I think, you know, um, mm-hmm. way over what we, you know, anticipated. And it's looking like that again this year. So we're just – Mississippi is in a great um, um, fiscal position, and um, I think it's great. And um, hopefully it stays that well, way. Hopefully we can bring in um, lots of industries and uh, continue to grow our economy and put more money into um, taxpayers' pocket. Now, the – the vote on that passed yesterday, and it was a pretty good vote. Uh, did, uh, was it on party lines, or do you? I, I don't know what the total vote was as far as the income tax. I don't remember. I think it was. Um, I think it was pretty overwhelming. I think there were some yeah. no votes, but it was it was a heavy um, yes vote. There were some no votes also on the teachers' pay raise, but that was also passed yesterday, and mm-hmm. um, it, it was kind of funny because when Richard was with me, Richard Bennett, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, earlier this week, we alluded to that, but. I don't know if they were ready to break it out then because the Senate had passed theirs, and it seems like the House said, well, we'll up you on it. (laughs) Not only did they up it, they passed it yesterday, and uh, I don't think you had just a few people who voted against that. I think there were only six no votes on that, so that was definitely um, a bipartisan vote and something that's that's greatly needed. Uh, We're losing teachers to Alabama and Tennessee and people, you know, on the state lines, Mm -hmm. and... um, we need to keep those teachers here in Mississippi, and um, so uh, we made a huge investment yesterday in um, the future. 